What is going on, my baboon brothers? My Simeon sisters, DJ is here with another installment of the Choosing a CEO in Competitive Advanced War series. This time, we'll be examining how to play the indirect specialist and possum spit sipping grit effectively. <laughs> It first needs to be noted that Grit is unique in that he is the Advanced Force CO that plays the most different from the rest of the Advanced Force COs. Sammy may add some mechs and transports, but Grit's unit composition is the most unique and important to understand to play him effectively. Sammy and Grit do share a lot of similarities though. Similar to Sammy, Grit is worse in Fog, is a higher skill level CO to play, and is a methodical, slow burn CO who thrives at longer games after he proliferates a large amount of indirects. Oftentimes an opponent will reach the point where they can't even break through Grit's defenses without losing their entire army to indirects once they charge in. Also, like Sammy, Grit's usefulness is extremely map dependent and he's not very adaptive at maps. Grit's effectiveness is also extremely CO dependent. In Tier 1 Fog, for example, if he faces the likes of the indirect killer Javier, he basically instantly loses. He also finds difficult matchups against Von Bolt, and even Hawk to a lesser degree. Grit ideally would like to play Sasha and maybe Sturm in Tier 1, depending on how overpowered Sturm is on a map. Now let's get into an overview of Grit's strengths and weaknesses and discuss Grit's ideal unit composition. Grit is an extreme CO who took boosting and directs and forgoing direct fire units to the max. His artillery are so overpowered that the changes to the artillery with one more range and 20% more firepower basically moved him into tier zero slash band category in standard play and tier one to two in fog. Meanwhile, his direct units are so, so bad, they barely dent an opponent's units on decent terrain, especially if he's matched up against the likes of a defense boosted CO like Sturm, Von Bolt, or Javier, RIP. For this reason, artillery are the backbone, front bone, whole damn skeleton of a well-played grit army. It is not unusual to see two times, three times, and even four times as many artillery as tanks in a grit army. However, you can't go too overboard, as in most instances, tanks, even with 80% firepower, are needed, especially as the first vehicle built to ward off recons in the early game. Anti-airs are also a must on all maps with airports, although he struggles to one-hit KO defensive CO copters in one hit. <laughs> Grit also has use for B-copters, medium tanks, neo-tanks, fighters, and even bombers in these situations, alongside rockets and missiles. Don't build recons though, unless you're playing Grit and Fog. And in that case, build more than the other COs, since Grit will typically have less vision because artillery only have one vision compared to tanks that have three. There is no magical balance for Grit's unit composition as it is map dependent, but most of your vehicles should be artillery. Overall, Grit's must have units for an ideal composition are infantry, artillery, recons, and anti-air. From there, you can add in a few tanks to give you a bit more flexibility and a faster answer to recons, as well as they can serve as a wall for your artillery. And you can also sprinkle in a medium tank, a neo tank, for a very solid wall and a tank or anti-air destroyer. These teched up units, like medium tanks and neo tanks, are especially good since usually players will often spam light vehicles like tanks and recons against Grit, since teching up makes no sense against them if Grit's artillery will just shred right through them anyway. Try to refrain from building rockets and battleships though, despite how tempting it is, because they are not nearly as cost effective as Grid's artillery, which can boost their range to comparable levels during CO powers. I will say that rockets and battleships do have some niche scenarios where they are quite effective, especially in scenarios where they can achieve a base lock or forward pressure otherwise unattainable by Grid's artilleries. Then you can consider building them. For example, on maps like Scavenger and Stitch Monster. The same applies to missiles. Their lack of movement and maneuverability makes them a liability on those maps, unless you can get an airport lock on, say, a map like Struggle Grinded. Anti-air still mostly do their jobs even at 80% firepower, and you can build three anti-air for the cost of two missiles for much, much better movement and flexibility.
So let's discuss Grit's gameplay style. As previously mentioned, Grit is a methodical push CEO who plays for unit count, not income. It's not a bad idea to play conservatively and defensively as Grit, barring a match that has a low day limit. In that case, I wouldn't even pick him, as indirects have lower movement and can't move an attack in the same turn. Setting up units properly to exert maximum pressure while also being defended takes time. Preserving infantry count is hugely important for Grit. He needs them not only for their capping and income, but to serve as meat shields and vision supporters for his indirects, so his opponent can't hit his artillery easily or get a first strike on his weak tanks. Therefore, avoid sacking infantry for income at all costs. It will pay off later, I promise you. Once you reach a critical mass of artillery that is enough of a deterrent that your opponent can't charge in and get a favorable trade, slowly inch forward two to three tiles at a time following the pace of the infantry as you clear out your opponent. Don't move all your units more than three tiles at once as this is the farthest an infantry can move and remember, infantry are your first line of defense. In summation, Grit's ideal strategy is essentially starting by playing defensively, accumulating your units, reaching a certain threshold of units and composition, and beginning a slow, patient push into contested areas, achieving a higher unit count in the process while destroying everything there, and then finally getting income advantage and winning the match. He does need to be careful though of a few things, which are his usual counters such as multiple fronts, front shifting, and missile powers from the likes of Von Bolt, Sturm, and Rachel due to Grid's strategy of clumping all his units together for protection. Okay, now let's discuss fog play and countering grit. Grit is much worse in fog for a few reasons. One, less tanks and more artillery means worse vision, since artillery and rockets only have one vision and require constant vision support provided by recons, tanks, and infantry on mountains. If they don't have vision, they're useless. End of story. Another reason for his fall from grace and fog is grit players prefer to calculate artillery coverage to make sure he can thwart enemy attacks. Without this knowledge of his opponent's unit composition and where his units are, grit can be caught off guard by an attack that breaks through his front line and smashes him unexpectedly. Grit can also find himself wasting time, being defensive where he doesn't need to be on an opponent's weak side, while the opponent goes to town on their strong side, and artillery don't front shift well, which is crucial in high level fog games. He finds a little help though, plopping his indirects in forests, hiding the unit and providing defense and making an opponent have to touch his unit before being able to attack the concealed unit. Generally though, this is not nearly as helpful as the lack of intel is detrimental to grit and fog. COs that really threaten grit are firepower and movement boosting COs, as with firepower boosts, they can often smash through his infantry walls and one shot his artillery, clearing the way for future attacks, while movement boosting COs can threaten his further back units and attack him unexpectedly. Von Bolt, Sturm, and Rachel superpowers are also a huge threat to Grit since Grit likes to clump up his units into a death ball for maximum protection and these attacks focus damage on a specific area of the map. Now let's talk about maps. Grit typically is either terrible or great on certain types of maps. Grit usually finds an advantage in choky maps, with several mountains and maps where there is less of a strong side and weak side and more of a brawl in the middle so he can clump up his units and keep the battles contained. Grit is like Goldilocks when it comes to base counts on maps. He dislikes low base count maps like 2 base because there typically won't be enough infantry to effectively serve as walls for his artillery. Meanwhile, Grit also doesn't like high base count maps like maps with 4 plus bases because then it becomes easier for an opponent to maintain equal unit count and pump out vehicles and make unit count less effective. Remember, as Grit, you aim for unit count and not income, so your opponent will probably have a higher income on the map. Therefore, 4 plus base maps and maps with high income, your opponent will be able to pump out more vehicles than you, making Grit less effective. That's one of the reasons why Grit is in the bottom tier in high funds. He prefers low income maps. Grit also flourishes on maps with no airports or weak airports. 
weak airports, meaning airports are far in the corner and that take a while to reach the front, or that are blocked by a pipe seam early on in the game, etc. Grit isn't necessarily bad on maps with one airport, and he typically does build some B copters, but frontline airports and maps with two plus airports per side usually spell trouble for Grit. Think of maps like Bohemian Skies. The worst map for Grit though is definitely mixed base maps. Not only do they typically have four plus bases, but the bases aren't connected and they don't allow for the proliferation of artillery and infantry so it's more difficult to clump up your units. Meanwhile, front shifting on mixed base is, is incredibly common, and as artillery are often stuck in place as an opponent can maneuver their tanks around and away from the artillery proliferation, the base lock can kill another base. I can attest, it was nearly impossible to play Grit versus Tier 1 on mixed base. I played versus Mangs' Sturm, and it was probably the one of the most lopsided matches there is other than Grit vs Javier. Grit is also incredibly difficult to play during live games for a few reasons. Number one, there's typically set day limits, which grants victory to the side with the most properties after a set amount of time. And Grit, like we said, likes longer games. It is also incredibly difficult to calculate artillery coverage on the fly in a live game with small increment. Now for our visual learners out there, let's look at a few examples of grit gameplay. All right, so for our first case study, we're gonna be taking a look at a game between Habits93 and Mr. Cannon. It was in the Smacky Cup 2, round four, I believe, on the map Tornado Road, and it is a tier two matchup. Now, just for some background information, this tier two matchup, Olaf was banned. Olaf is overpowered on this map, therefore all you have for options are Max, Grit, or Eagle. Max seems to be like the most straightforward option. However, there's some nice artillery perching positions to defend and go on the offensive against comm towers. So Grid isn't terrible on this map. I think all three COs have pretty good viability as long as you play them well. Grid is strength or in the top over here and the bottom down here, kind of getting maybe both comm towers, putting pressure on the opponent. There's mountains to defend and make some walls. There's some nice forests to push back against the opponent, but the middle is a bit tricky for Grit here. So transitioning to the middle is a, a tricky situation. I think Habits93 did a bang up job doing it. I think he did a very good job. Uh, so I wanted to show how he played Grit very well and effectively. Mr. Cannon played a pretty decent max too. I think he had a very strong early game. He seemed to know what he was doing against a Grit player, uh, but I'll point out some things that could be improved upon uh, from both players' perspective. So without further ado, let's get the gift started. We're just gonna go through it really quickly. So no surprises here. Uh, early artillery from habits. Uh, sometimes you see a tank first, sometimes you see a recon first. Artillery first makes sense too because you want to get it planted first, then you get the vision later. Uh, two recons later for Mr. Cannon, he could have gone for a day three recon or a day four recon, or, or uh, sorry, a day four recon for that matter, but instead he went for two day four recons instead of one day three recon, which is okay. Uh, Habits follows up with a recon on his weak side. Notice how he's on the weak side over here. He's not really putting too much pressure on the strong side. As Grit, you're a defensive CO for the mass, vast majority of matchups. Therefore, you want to be having more defensive position. You can you can put old artillery on your weak side. You have a get out of jail free card. You can have at it. Go for it. And uh, Habits does another thing that I appreciate. He builds an early tank over there. I like tanks, especially against Max, uh, for a few reasons. Number one. You're going to expect a lot of recons facing Max or even Eagle versus Grit because recons are very cost effective trades against artillery. Even if they die, it's 4k lost. It's not 7k lost like a tank. Number two, they're great walls. Infantry walls are going to get one shot by Max tanks with powers, superpowers, etc. However, a Max tank with a superpower and a calm tower will not one shot a tank a grit tank on a road. So they are a very strong wall that cannot be one shot except by medium tanks and neo tanks from the max player. So they're very consistently nice walls. They're recon busters in the early game, later game, they can serve as nice walls for your artillery and also provide three vision. So I love the tank right there. Smart play by habits. They don't only build artillery, don't only build recons, mix in some anti-air, mix in some tanks. On the defensive position at the bottom over here, the recons are getting information for Max, uh, see the tank buster already busted in. It's like, get the hell off this property. I'm getting it now. The artillery is not prepared to hit this, so the tank was needed in this situation. Two recons as well, providing a lot of reconnaissance. Uh, there's not, not too many mountains in the middle area, so uh, I like what I'm seeing from Habit so far. And then the patience. See, he's building up over here. He's actually not putting an, uh, artillery over here. He actually is like kind of juking him out. He's faking that he has an artillery here, and, and Red buy, buys it. I would have bought it too. Um, 
He's actually coalescing in the middle early, which I appreciate. Usually people get caught off guard. It transitions to the mid middle in the middle of the game and people are un unaware, but Habits is already set. And now you have the death ball and it's really hard to get in. Now a thing about Mr. Cannon here that I think he needs to realize is uh, our infantry walls are great against like Eagle, against other Maxes because they would protect your vehicles. But Grit, he's gonna have like two tanks, three tanks, maybe. Put all your vehicles in the front so you're actually closer to the artillery. These are preventing the vehicles from reaching closer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It can only reach this artillery from this position. If it was one cl space closer, you can see more with the recons and you can attack more. So if you're playing against Grit, put your vehicles at the very front of the line right away from the artillery fire. You see the artillery over here. You know it's there with the recons and whatnot. So make sure or you can assume at least, you know you're safe right here. So put all your vehicles in the safe zone, as close as you can get with your vehicles. That way when you get a power or superpower, you can do maximum damage. But the artillery, I mean, infantry walls are kind of, see, you don't need to protect these copters. You don't need to protect them. There's there's no copters, there's one copter. And Grit is not going to attack into you nine times out of 10, a well-played Grit. You can be extremely aggressive. You want to enforce your vehicles to the front of your lines, you're not playing a normal CS, so this is kind of just a, a little note for people who play against Grid as well. I like the tanks over here. Can't be one shot. Infantry can be one shot, but look, they're on cities. There's one on the road can be one shot, but they're great defensive terrain. So many artillery habits is doing a great job. Red has a little whimpery attack. He puts the recon in, he tests it around. That's fine. Test what, what's going on here. Habits kills everything, and then I believe he goes baboonian on this turn. Red's like, <laughs> superpower, boom, 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 boom. But look, he uses the superpower this turn, right? Imagine if the vehicles are one space closer. You have a little bit more vision. You can see all these artillery. Imagine the recon is here, or even one space closer. You could have, he could have wiped Habits pretty hard on this, on this turn, but see the vehicles couldn't quite reach the back ranks and then blue goes snipe attack you put on your power don't use the superpower boom 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 and look at all that look at all it go and then as soon as that happens red has has a good fight he does another push over here strong he's he's playing max pretty well can't lie but then the unit count just drops this the second term is just punishing goes for a lot of attacks another snipe attack two snipe attacks in a row it's hard for anyone to live that and then from there on, once you're behind 10 in unit count against Grit, you're pretty much toast. I don't care what your income is for the most part. Unless it's a really low income map, you're not recovering from that. And Habits is not pushing forward. He's slowly inching forward. He doesn't need to push. He has the same income. He doesn't care if that. He knows he's ahead. He knows he's ahead. He has 50 units. Mr. Cannon does not have anywhere near that. He's still taking his time and then there that's just look at that that's just domination and uh so really well played by habits right there tons of artillery utilizing the recons tanks early game still building copters like i said don't forget you're in advanced war co you can build whatever units you want you can build t-copters you can build anti you can build whatever you want as grit you're not beholden to only build artillery to only build missiles there wasn't a single rocket Rocket is not needed. There wasn't a single missiles. Missiles are not needed. Understand that Antair are typically going to do a much better job than missiles are. And that artillery are going to do a much better job than rockets are. Just in terms of even transporting them to the front line. So just notice that artillery are the backbone and the front bone of your army. And uh, so that's just a great game by Habits. I, I zoomed through that, but just well played by him. Mr. Cannon put on a good fight, but in the end... Uh, Max wasn't quite able to get through. I think if he had his units one space closer, it could have been a lot closer battle and maybe even won the game. Uh, so that is our first case study. All right, so for our second case study, we're going to be examining a game that I had against Poland. And this game actually was in a live setting, a fog map, and two base. Probably one of the worst setups for Grit in all possibilities. However, I wanted to have a fun game in Poland, and we agreed to this matchup. And I believe I played Grit to the best of my ability in this instance, and uh, you can learn a lot from this matchup right here, and how Poland was able to exploit Sturm in order to beat Grit. So starting off, I played very conservatively. I actually built an artillery first rather than a recon in this instance. Because I'm playing verse or Tang in this instance, because I'm playing against Sturm, I'm expecting a lot of recons. Honestly, I probably could have gone tank here, but I wanted to play super defensive because I was expecting not just one recon, not two recons, but three to four recons in the early game. So I was going to play extra defensive in this matchup. 
as you can see, my artillery, I'm not even putting on the HQ over here to defend this uh, infantry over here. I'm, I'm deathly scared. Luckily, my opponent didn't go for a day three recon, but rather a day four recon. I'm building my own recon for vision over here. Uh, I'm building a tank as well. You need tanks uh, in this instance because you're playing against so many stern recons. In this instance, I'm playing super defensive. He actually attacks into me over here. I'm able to get a nice shot off. And I do have an early income, or sorry, early unit count advantage. My opponent, of course, is going to have that early income advantage as Sturm. Play very conservatively. Get my arties and I'm, I'm dabbling. As you can see over here, it is a two-base map. It's harder to proliferate all your units in the center since everything is open. So I have a bunch of artillery down here, up here. So it would really behoove my opponent to do a front shift, which he eventually does. Attack to the top. Attacks really far into me, but I'm able to actually quite counter that quite well. Use my power, destroy a lot of units. As you can see, I'm ahead in unit count, unit value at the beginning of the turn. However, Poland keeps attacking into it, uses a meter strike, and really neuters my units over here. Now, I want to point something out that it's not quite intuitive that Poland did. That is quite a good move. First off, he has income advantage, so he wants to tech up. However, like I mentioned against Grit earlier, you don't really want to tech up to medium tanks and neo tanks versus Grit because they're just also going to die to artillery. So what does Poland do instead? He spams our copters for one thing, but then he builds our rockets. Sturm rockets are incredibly effective against Grit because they outmaneuver uh, my own artillery as Grit because they move further because they have no movement cost. Uh, associated with Sturm, they can move on any tile one, uh, and they also reach one extra range. So they're quite effective, and they also are hidden behind. In order to hit the rockets, you need to be able to see them. And because Grit has such issues with vision, it's hard to actually uncover the rockets. And actually, I think I took a few hits by the rockets before I realized they were even there. I thought it was an artillery at first. I was like, where, where's that coming from? But then the rockets would actually be able to use very effectively. So I actually win the battle over here. I'm doing quite well. Unit count, everything's going well. I'm playing Grit very well, but then the rockets comes in, he's able to get the rockets over here. I had, I had thought I had a wall over here. It's like, oh, he's not gonna be able to break through. I can hold this down. As long as I proliferate my number of units, I have more units than him. I have more unit value than him at probably soon. Uh, but then the rockets is able to chip away with that and then just bust everything open and I cannot make a wall. Everything just flies through. He's able to break through. Rockets over here, rockets over here. I was able to detect that other one, but rockets were quite effective. So in this instance, I just wanna demonstrate the issues that Grit can run into playing CEOs such as Sturm. Uh, rockets are quite effective against them. Battlecopter spam is effective against them. Even though Sturm Battlecopters aren't necessarily good, it forced a lot of anti-airs for me, which means less artillery because there's only two base. Every time I build an anti-air, I'm not going to be able to build another artillery. I tried to heal up my, all my artillery, but Sturm was relentless, kept murdering off my weakened artillery, and just was able to abuse that nice income advantage. A game on the map splintered in Global League in a tier 1 mashup between Grit and Von Bolt. Kantbe is playing Grit and an unknown player is playing Von Bolt. Honestly, not a great matchup for Grit, one of his worst matchups uh, as previously mentioned. The Von Bolt superpower along with the defensive bonus makes Von Bolt a challenging opponent for Grit. Grit is by no means a great CO to pick in this map. Honestly, it's a tier 1 matchup, I typically don't pick Grit in the majority of the time for the chance of facing Javier's and the like. But Kante wanted a challenge and wanted to demonstrate that he can play Grit effectively. So without further ado, let's look into this game. So you might notice early on, Kante actually builds an artillery first. Now I'm typically of the type of person that builds a tank rather than an artillery early on, just to get that vision to deter recons, because you actually do say, see a day three recon by the unknown player. So in this instance, I do not agree with this move, but it happens and it actually pays off by killing or actually nearly mortally wounding this recon. You'd love to kill it because it still provides vision. We hate 1 HP, 2 HP recons because they're pests. They can review, you can reveal some intel later on. That's very helpful. So in this instance, not a great idea. Over here, Kanpei does have another artillery. He's spamming artillery early. Builds a recon actually after two artillery. A little later than I normally would do, but hey, everyone has their own ways they address things. It actually is not covering this infantry, so a little bit of a miscalculation by Kanpei. Got a little too greedy over there, so he has to back up. But notice now, Kanpei, from this point onward, Kanpei plays nearly, nearly flawlessly. He has his artillery covering everything that needs to be done. He's not overextending at any point. So if you go through, you can see all the infantry are covered. They complete all their captures. He doesn't go for any contested properties yet. He does not go in for this property over here without artillery support. He's not going to this property over here without artillery support. Not even he's preventing the comm tower for the longest time as well. He's getting everything he needs to do without overextending. 
everything is defended. Green cannot interrupt any of these things without paying the ultimate price of losing units. Comple is paying quite well here. Denying the comm tower, denying these properties uh, for green, excuse me, denying the comm tower. Not actually, he actually gives up vision on this comm tower over here. I'm not entirely sure about that. I might want to maintain vision here. You already have the recon here. He wants to guard against an attack from the sides, I guess. So green could actually go in and attack this artillery right in this next turn. And actually, I believe he does an effort next turn if Compe does not move. Compe getting some quick kills, getting that unit count advantage, that grit so, so, ne so needs. And uh, positioning on his recons uh, effectively is artillery and forest. He's spamming out the artillery. Look at the unit composition. Tons and tons of, recon uh, of artillery. He's got nine artillery, one tank. Two recons and two anti-air. Like I said, anti-air, the backbone of your anti, uh, of destroying ant, uh, air units. You do not really want to build missiles. So right here, playing very defensively. They have pretty equal income too. Like I said, it's not a big deal. You're down 1K, you're down 2K, down 3K. Who cares? Unit count. Proliferate those artilleries, baby. And this turn, Green actually attacks in. He gets impatient. He's like, ah, I'm tired of all these artillery. I need to get that comp tower. He attacks. He kills an artillery. Go, 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 go. He attacks in. However, Conpe, at this time, boom, boom, boom. He fires back, kills a bunch of units. He's actually not going to pop his CO power. He doesn't need to this turn. He actually front shifts an artillery over here. You're very curious, but it actually, I think, believe pays off. His artillery are a little bit exposed. You can easily reach a couple of them, but not all of them. And he builds a medium tank. Like I said, you can tech up to medium tanks. They're tank busters, they're great walls. How is your opponent gonna break through that medium tank? They don't have any artillery of their own. They don't have any teched up units of their own. How would you get past a medium tank? This is why medium tank neo tanks are actually effective in grit if you can't afford them. You don't wanna be spamming them out, but having one or two to serve as uh, attackers and blockers is quite effective. So in this instance, Green it keeps attacking in. Great uses super power or his CO power. Boom, 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 boom. Another thing about Great, you want to be spamming the CO power, not the super power. The CO power is the same firepower bonus as the super CO power, but it's only three stars instead of six, and it has one less range than the super CO power. So from an effective standpoint, you want to be spamming the CO power, not the super power. Breaks through, and let's just glaze over what happens next. He builds up, he proliferates, he doesn't push proliferates slowly make sure see, he's even pulling back at this point he's happy he's behind 2k he's happy he's still proliferating units right here there is no rush more and more and more and more compa i mean the opponent even uses a superpower here is not able to break through and then at this moment there's just no hope he pushes through but he realizes hey i, I pushed through but look look at the unit value look at the number of units at the end here it's just domination overall. So a little bit of a strange start by Compe, but he, he, he really showed patience, positioning, when to use his CO power, etc. Compe played this game quite well and demonstrated an effective grit and a difficult tier one matchup. And that, my friends, concludes how to play grit effectively in competitive advanced sports. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below. And remember, I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys were entertained. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.